I wanted to visit with you briefly about parallel velocity vectors, and when we see a parallel velocity vectors, we know that the omega of the particular link is zero, and that means the velocity vectors on each side of that link are equal to zero. So let's look at this first one. This is a carnival ride, and you can see that these two arms uh, both rotate around their perspective rotation points right there. And if that's the case, then there is going to be a curvilinear circular motion for each one of these things about that point. And if we know that, then we can say that there's going to be a velocity vector that's going to be tangent to the path. And if that's the case, we can try to find the instantaneous center by connecting perpendicular lines to the known velocity vectors. We see that there is no IC because that's the case. Uh, because uh, those uh, lines do not intersect, so that means that there's no IC. And if that's, what that means then is that this link right here is going to be omega is equal to zero. And if that's the case, then if this is VA <clears throat> and this is VB, we can say that VA equals VB. And that's the general conclusion that uh, we discover uh, when we find an omega equals zero, that it is in translation only. Even if it's curvilinear translation, it is still translation, and at, that in at this instant, VA is equal to VB. All right, let's look at another one. Here's one from the textbook. And, uh, well, they're all from the textbook, I guess, but this one's kind of curious, and that let's just uh, look at right now at the uh, motion of, of this guy. We can see that this is rotating around in a circle. It's going to pull this one this way, and if it pulls it this way, it's going to make this one rotate around in a circle, and it's gonna, that means it's going to go that way. So let's draw the personality, or <laughs> personality, the velocity vectors of these two points. So I'm going to say that this one goes straight out that way because that's going to be right there and that one's going to be straight out that way. If I do that and try to def, uh, find the, uh, if I want to find the omega of this link right here, then I, uh, I try to find the IC by connecting perpendicular lines to my known velocity vectors. I can see that omega of this point, omega, is going to be equal to zero. And when that's the case, then this V, we'll call this point A, we'll say VA, and VB have to be equal to each other. Now here's the next thing is that, and, and it may be easy to see here because this is this is in curvilinear translation, it's just going to go rotate around, but in, in this case it's going to, VA is equal to VB for all values of theta, if you will, as it rotates around. But how about this one over here? Let's look at this one. This, uh, this part over here also rotates, or uh, moves only in that direction, so we'll call that point uh, C. And when we try to find the omega of this part right here, again, we'll define, or we'll try to, try to find the IC for this point, and we're going to see that this link is also omega is equal to zero at this instant. And if omega is equal to zero, then that says VC is also V equal to VA and VB. Now, uh, VA and VB are going to be equal to each other for all values of rotational uh, position, but VC is equal to VA for only this instant, only at this very instant when VA and v, VC are, are going, going in the same direction that there is no IC. As soon as A rotates around a little ways and going down this way, then this link would not have a zero omega anymore. All right, let's do one more, or maybe a couple more here. Um, this one over here, um, is uh, similar in that this one, this link rotates about point C, this link rotates about, or sorry, this link over here, point B rotates about point A, and point D rotates about point C. Again, if I try to draw my pers uh, my perpendicular lines to my known, uh, or perpendicular lines there, and try to find out a omega here, we'll see clearly that there is an omega here because there is an IC. But what about this link right here? If I say this one has a velocity only in that direction because it's constrained to move in that slot, and again, if I try to find my perpendicular lines here, I can see that this point here is omega is equal to zero of DE, of omega of DE is equal to zero, and if that's the case, that says that VD and VE are equal to each other. Again, that's an instantaneous thing because it's only going to happen at that one spot. 
All right, I got one more I want to show you. I did one very similar to this one in class, so I don't think I'll have to go through this one with you. But let's talk about this one. This is a this is a kind of a curious one. Let's get it a little bit larger here. And um, here, what we've got is uh, scalar rotation. We talked about this in class, but as this rotates around in this direction, it it um, it's actually going going to go in this direction. If it rotates this way and it doesn't slip here, which obviously it can't because that's a gear, then it has to move in that direction. And what we'll see is that there's a velocity profile all along this vertical line, which looks like this. And we have a velocity profile, something like that. And it says that the velocity of O moves in that direction, which we should know something about right now, but it also says the velocity of A only goes in that direction too, because that's going to be on this perpendicular, or on this line connecting the, the center and the top and all that sort of stuff. So it says the velocity of A is only going in that direction. Let me put that a little bit bigger. If the velocity of A only goes in that direction, and the velocity of B is also constrained to move in this slot, we know that the velocity of B can only go in that direction. And again, we try to find the instantaneous center of this link, of this link here, uh, link AB. I'll do that by connecting perpendicular lines to my known velocity vectors. I can see that omega of AB is equal to zero. And if that's the case, then VA equals VB at this instant. All right, well, I hope that this can help uh, uh, help explain some of these parallel velocity vectors. And once you get used to identifying them, I think you'll find that the analysis goes quite fast. Um, so again, as I encourage you in class, go through every picture in the book and identify the velocity vectors and some unique things about them. In this case, uh, try to find um, parallel velocity vectors and, and then the link between those two vectors is going to be equal to zero and the velocities at the ends of that link are going to be equal to each other.